Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Locust Grove United Church of Christ. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Weeds and seeds growing together. Each will influence the other. What will we learn from the weeds? Trials and tribulations, choices that have not always worked out. We need to teach us about perseverance. Consider the top dandelion plant, pushing its way up through the pavement. For some, it's just a weed, but for others, there are lessons to be learned. What will be gained from the seeds? Inside each one of us, in God's garden, God's love extends to both, asking both to consider what each has to offer to a hurting world. Lord, help us to be good seeds, bearing fruits of kindness, justice, and compassion. Keep us mindful of those for whom life has been difficult, and yet they persist in trying to make each day better. Be in our hearts, O oh Lord, and in our lives.
join me in our opening prayer. God, God is us, we, we come are here, here from the weariness of the week, from various triumphs, from fears and doubts. Open our hearts to receive your surprising message of hope for all people, and may this service give us the spiritual nourishment we need this week to serve and follow you. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our scripture reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30, and 36 to 43. The parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. The parable of the weeds explained. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. The enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up, and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, and where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. May we learn and live by his holy word. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go before our Lord in prayer. Lord, we're so grateful for this glorious, beautiful day that you have given to us and that we can gather here to worship you. We ask that the Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts today through the words of song, through the words of scripture, through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It was a corner garden on the edge of the yard and every year at the parsonage at the church in Indiana, I would plant zinnias there, and it was beautiful. But this one year, I decided to do something different. So I bought a pack of mixed seeds. I thought it would be kind of fun to see what would come up. Only problem was that I couldn't identify what was coming up. I remember there was one <laughs> plant and I just couldn't figure out, was it a weed or a flower? So I asked our neighbor, Bob, who was a seasoned gardener, right by our driveway was his large and very productive vegetable garden, so I was sure he could help me. It's a weed, he said, but something inside me told me to wait before I pulled it out, so I did. This 13th chapter of Matthew could probably be called the chapter about the seeds and the weeds. First, we have the story of the parable of the sower, 
And then our parable for today about the wheat and the weeds. And scattered throughout the pages of this chapter are the explanations of both of these two parables. A field is planted with good seed, and as the seed grows, it becomes obvious to the owner's servants that something isn't right. They even question the quality of the seeds the owner had planted, for now there are weeds throughout the whole garden. I have read that in Israel, there is a weed called darnel, which is a noxious weed which clearly closely resembles wheat. But the difference between the wheat and the darnel becomes evident only when the wheat matures and the ears appear. For unlike the ears of wheat which will grow heavy and droop as they mature, the ears of the darnel will stand up straight. Some believe that this is one of the weeds that might have been referred to in this parable. So the servants notice the difference and they want to pull the weeds out. They want to do what I have done since we got home from vacation, pull out the weeds. <laughs> but the owner makes them wait, fearful they will pull out the wheat along with the weeds. Now I get that. When we have a good crop of carrots coming up in the garden, I try to weed often. But I know that some weeds just have to stay where they are, or I might pull the tender carrot plants right along out with the weeds. I just have to wait. Later when the plants are ready, we read in the parable that the weeds would be removed and burned in the fire, but until then, they would grow together. Well, we're not just speaking about weeds and wheat, are we? This being a parable, there is always more to the story. So the disciples follow Jesus into a house so that they can hear what that more is. The wheat, Jesus explains, is the people of the kingdom, and the weeds are the people of the evil one. Well, that is sure cut and dry, isn't it? And yet life just isn't ever cut and dry. And it isn't always helpful to divide everything up in this way either. When I was younger, I remember feeling safer if I could put people in categories. They were the good guys, they were the bad guys. I even liked those movies where they even dressed in a way that made it clear but life just isn't that way. And most people are a mixture of some good and some bad, right? Even we are, aren't we? We're all a bit broken, fallen, struggling, striving to follow the Lord, but often going our own way, our own path at times, if we're honest. So how do we know who the weeds are? How do we know who is who? Well, we don't. And you know what? We don't need to. Our mission is to keep on growing and following the Lord and hopefully making a difference in the world and how we live our lives. Theologian Klein Snodgrass writes, the kingdom comes with limitless grace in the midst of an evil world. The issue is one of identity. If we take our identity from the kingdom of limitless grace, how will that identity be lived out? God offers that limitless grace to us every day, even as we make mistakes and fall, even as we get back up and receive that grace once more. As we journey in this path called life, some near us may fall more or less than we do. Some may not even know about the grace God offers. As people offered limitless grace, how can we extend it to others as we live out our identity as followers of Christ? After all, perhaps the reason the wheat and the weed are together is so that you and I can extend that grace and help those growing near us. Pastor Janet Hunt writes that she's never been a very good gardener. And that for whatever reason, she can't tell weeds from wheat 
or anything else for that matter. And if that is true when it comes to green growing things, she writes, for me, this is all the more true among human beings. I can't tell weed from wheat. A couple of years ago, when she began as a pastor of her church, the congregation was still in turmoil after a long, drawn-out battle. To carry out the metaphor, casualties were everywhere. <coughs> Some they knew about and others were simply left to guess at. In that tender time when their healing had only just begun, one of the leaders suggested that she begin to make birthday calls. The thought was that this would promote a sort of simple kindness, which was so very much needed then. Well, the church had an easy system for accessing birthdays and phone numbers, and it seemed like an easy enough thing to do. And so for the last couple of years, every day she is in the office, Pastor Janet makes birthday calls. Sometimes she calls a day or two early, Sometimes she's up to a week late. Often she leaves messages. Occasionally she finds a number is no longer in service. She just makes the calls. Only there is this. The list they have includes everyone. It includes active members and those they haven't seen in years. It includes children who were baptized and whose parents never actually joined. It includes those who live nearby and those who have long since moved away. Pastor Janet makes no distinction. She just called them all. Early on, a couple of times she was asked, are you actually calling everyone? Why aren't you just calling the active members? In other words, she writes, how come you're not just calling the weak? Well, when she first began making those calls, she wouldn't have known the difference. She said she would not have been able to distinguish the weeds from the wheat. Even more than that, though, and she means this most sincerely, who was she to say who is weed and who is wheat? Now, I know this is obvious, she writes, but people are different from green things that grow. One's weakness, at least in this way, is not engraved on one's DNA. Indeed, one may look an awful lot like a weed now, but later turn out to be wheat, after all. And it could just be that a 30-second birthday call from a pastor, or any word of kindness or encouragement from anyone connected with a faith community, might be just what makes the difference. And there is this, she continues, even though one is not showing up as wheat here, doesn't mean they aren't showing up as wheat somewhere else. And shouldn't I be encouraging that? For that matter, at some time, everyone I call had some connection to this wheat field we call First Lutheran Church. Maybe they'll find their way back and maybe they won't. I wouldn't want to be the one to stand in their way. So here is what Pastor Janet learned in a couple of seasons of making those calls. Those we might be tempted to think of as weeds, she writes, are more open to picking up the phone the second, third, and fourth time a family birthday rolls around. The conversation seems to come easier. I have to say that I can't help but wonder if that is because they thought I thought they were weeds before and have since discovered I don't think that at all. I am just calling to wish them happy birthday. I'm a gardener who can't tell the difference. More than that, I suppose I don't want to tell the difference, not really. Now I know that Jesus doesn't say exactly this in this parable, she continues. Evidently, in the image he offers now, one can easily tell which is wheat and which are weeds. Even so, he seems to be saying that we are to let someone else sort it out. That to pull out the weeds too early could mean uprooting all the rest. Either way, I'm glad I'm not the one sorting. 
Because people are harder to categorize than your ordinary wheat and weeds. And I'll say it again, I can't tell the difference. I'm a terrible gardener. Well, if that is the definition of a terrible gardener, I want to be one too. <laughs> I want to be open to seeing people in a way that I have no idea if they are wheat or weed, but just a person who needs to know that limitless grace of God. Because after all, we are not the ones to decide if someone is in or if someone is out. God is the judge, and that is just fine with me. How about you? Even though there are many in our society who like to be judge and jury over many people these days, we know God is the judge. We're just called to live side by side with one another and extend that limitless grace as it has been extended to us. As for that plant in the garden in Indiana, well, I waited and watched it grow, and it turned out Bob was wrong. It was a beautiful cone flower that grew so big and so beautiful, I couldn't believe it. Glad I didn't judge it wrongly and I, that I let it grow. I hope I do that every day. Amen. We have some birthdays to celebrate. Jeannie Nichols, Sarah Tarber, and Cole Schenberger. So let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday. Effie in our prayers, who is at Misericordia right now. And um, I asked if you would keep a friend of mine. I'm going to be going to an ordination this afternoon. It's a student who my husband had at his church. We were figuring he's had 12 students over the years, and his name is Tom Keeper. He's becoming ordained today. He has a church and um, got all his paperwork in and everything, and his ordination is today. So pray that God blesses this day for him. And I, I put Ukraine, of course, in the prayer list to pray for peace. And um, Valerie asks if we could continue to keep her in prayer and her ongoing medical problem issues. Um, Linda had some good news. And that she and Charlie, their grandson Nathan, got engaged. So that's exciting. There's a, a wedding in the future, another one. <laughs> and let's keep Barb in our prayers at the loss of her dad, Bill. I know it's going to be a, a difficult time for her, so let's keep the Barb in our prayers. And I added the extreme heat to the list because so many people are, that are, I don't know how they're doing it. And I love the heat, <laughs> as you all know. But this is some really tough heat a lot of people are going through in a lot of states to pray for safety for folks. So let us go before our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, I thank you so much for that limitless grace that you offer to us, Lord. And as we receive that grace, help all of us to realize that it's never our job to judge who is a wheat and who is a weed. It's yours, God. It's your job. And at the end of time, you will decide what category and where people are. And maybe you do keep us growing and we're living together with people some might say are weeds because you know that we have someone, you, living inside of us and that we could share that grace, that story, that offer of grace that you offer to everyone, Lord. 
we could love them and show them your love. We could be the one who helps them to grow and, and be wheat and be what you call us to be, Lord. Help us to, to never think that we should ever be judged. Thank you that you are. How wonderful that you do that, Lord, and we don't have to worry about that. And yet in our society, there's so much judging going on all the time on social media, everywhere you look. May we not participate, Lord. May we bring grace and peace and joy and the message of salvation in Jesus and love to everyone that we meet, Lord. To let that message be known that you love us. And you don't want anyone to not be with you later on in this life, Lord. You want everyone to follow you. And if a birthday call or a word of kindness, as Pastor Janet said, can make a difference, help us to know what that is and lay it on our hearts so we can be that voice, the one who can bring that word of grace and hope that comes through you. Because we are your willing instruments, Lord. And thank you for the grace you offer to us every single day. We ask, Lord, that you would bless Jeannie and Sarah and Cole this week for a wonderful birthday. Bless their day, Lord. And we ask that you would be with Effie. Lord, you brought her through so much. And we ask that you continue to work through the therapy she's getting in Misericordia. We pray you continue to help her to get stronger and help her to, to feel your presence with her. Diane said she's getting stronger every day. And I pray that you continue to bless her. I pray for Tom Keeper, who's being ordained today. And I pray that you would continue to bless his ministry and bless that service today. And, and thank you for his ministry and for all who are going into ministry. We pray that you would raise up those who feel that call, feel that nudge in their heart to follow you and serve in ministry, and that they would respond to that, Lord. We lift up Ukraine, and we pray for peace. Every day we hear something new, Lord. We just pray for peace. We just want it to be over, Lord. And we lift up Valerie and the health issues that she's dealing with and the different doctors. Help her, Lord, to, to know exactly what is the right thing to do, Lord. Give her guidance. And thank you that Linda and Charlie get to share such wonderful news about Nathan, their grandson, who got engaged. And we pray that you would just bless Nathan and his fiance as they plan their wedding and as they... Someday soon begin their new life together, Lord. And we lift up Barb, who is grieving the loss of her father, Bill. We lift up ourselves as well as we grieve his loss. And we pray for your comfort and your strength for her and for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you will be the one to carry her through this time. I know she's leaning on you and trusting in you. We lift up those who are dealing and living with this extreme heat that's going on this summer. Pray especially for those who may not have air conditioning or those who are working outside, that you would keep them safe. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here to hear your word, to worship together. So let us join our voices together now as we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
With all the blessings that we receive from our Lord, we offer all we have and all we are. So let us join together in an offertory prayer printed in our bulletin. Lord, we present these tokens of the many blessings you have poured into our lives. Make us people who are unafraid to proclaim our faith in our walk with you. Help these gifts we offer today to bring hope and comfort to all those in need. And may we grow in righteousness that we might together experience the reality of your realm in our daily lives, here and now, and for all eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I want to mention we are having a little gathering downstairs, fellowship and food, right after the service today. And um, I noticed there's some dresses in my office. Happy to see that. Keep bringing them in. <laughs> uh, we know tomorrow night when we go through sorting them, we're going to have a lot of work to do. There was a, some church that got 100 dresses for us, so we're going to be busy Monday night. <laughs> and um, if anyone has not done so, please give your information to Linda so we can make our records more complete. And there are sign-up sheets for the barbecues at each door for anyone who wants to help on that day. And a reminder to save our aluminum pads. Anything else? Oh, sure. Um, as far as the barbecue, I just wanted to notice that the sign-up sheets are um, pretty light. Uh, I know some people don't always sign up and they show up to help, but as of right now, I'm really concerned that we're going to have enough help, uh, especially for serving, because I know some of the ladies that normally help serve are not going to be available, um, and also people to make the chicken. So. Uh, if you are a person that hasn't signed up uh, and plan on being there, can you let me know after church that you are going to be able to help or sign the sheet by next week? Um, if the sheet looks the same next week as it does right now, I'm afraid we might have to cancel. I don't really want to do that, but um, we can't do a barbecue with two or three people doing all the work. So, thank you.